Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. I don't like it around here, Rico. The waterfront? What's the matter with it? Oh, I don't know. I, I get the jitters. You think too much. Listen, after we pick up the stuff from Sparrow, you can retire. Ever been in Florida? Yeah, yeah, once. I didn't like it. All right, so you can retire someplace else. Uh, is that the ship up ahead? Yeah, it ought to be if we're on the right pier. Yeah, that's the expo. Yeah, there's no lights on it. Nobody's aboard except Sparrow. Yeah, I'll be glad to see him. Me too. Fifty grand on the hook. Here we go. What's the matter? Somebody's on deck. It's not Sparrow. Huh? Oh, relax. It's an old man, the night watchman. Oh. Why well, they got to have a night watchman around, I don't know. You think somebody might sweat for a ship? Hey, you. Huh? What's your order out here? Uh, we're coming aboard. We got an appointment. Okay, come on. Appointment with who? Put your popcorn away. Sparrow is expecting us. Sparrow? Yeah, one of the crew. You heard of him, didn't you? Yes. Heard a lot about him. How come? He jumped boat. Here we go. Tell you what he says. Collins. The jump boat where, Pop? Galveston. The crew was talking about it. Sparrow had been acting funny ever since the boat pulled out of Amsterdam. Come, Galveston. Goodbye, Mr. Sparrow. Oh, that's fine. Goodbye to our stone, Shut up, too. Collins. You have something belonging to you, friend? No, no. Uh, we're friends of his. We just wanted to get in touch with him. Well, you sure come to the wrong place. You could be putting on an act. You're on the ship. Go ahead and look for him. Uh, never mind. Come on, Collins. Come on. Aren't we going to wait? Nah, this is one place Sparrow wouldn't ever show up. But he'll have to show sooner or later. And when he does, let's get out of here. So long, Pop. So long. Yeah. Uh, they left, Sparrow. Oh, I guess they believe you, huh? <laughs> yeah, they sure did. I offered to let him search the ship. They was too smart. Figured if you was really on board, I wouldn't have offered. So they went away. Uh-huh. Thanks, Gleason. Here. Here's a fiber. <laughs> Why do you want to dock them so bad? Oh, I told you. You know, I owe them some money. I ain't got it. It's, uh... Hey, take the fiver, huh? Uh, that isn't the way they told us. What is in the way? You owe them a few bucks. In the way they figured it, it was 50,000. You're crazy. In stones, they said. Where are they, Mr. Sparrow? I said you're crazy. You can say it again if it makes you feel any better. <laughs> I think maybe I'll take a look. Get away from that bag. But, Mr. Sparrow, I've got a gun. I'm a warning you. Better keep clear of me. Oh. Oh, a fool. What good is 50,000 to you? You're dead. <laughs> Give me that gun. I... I'll break your arm. A fool. Watch Just about to curl up in front of the fire with a bottle of shut eye and sleep and sleep. And? Well, maybe I don't need tablets to soothe my nerves. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Mm. Mr. Templer, my name is Susan Sparrow. That sounds very demure. Are you? Isn't that the kind of thing you should find out for yourself? Miss Sparrow or Mrs.? Mrs. Oh. And I could always ask your husband. If you can find him. I can't. That's why I've come to you. Oh, I see. Somebody lost him? Well, he was supposed to have reached New York three days ago. 
on the steamship Exbrook. Oh, he was a passenger? No, one of the crew. He hasn't come home, Mr. Templer. You waited three days before doing anything about it? Well, of course, because we live in, in Cleveland. Oh, which means you'd have allowed him a day to get there, a day's wait before you got alarmed, and a day for you to come here. All right. Uh, can you think of any reason why he wouldn't have come to Cleveland? Can you? Hmm. Well, of course, he may not feel the same way I do about... About? Cleveland. You've got in touch with the ship's captain? No. You see, Frank, my husband, didn't want anyone to know he was married. He's shy? Oh, I don't know. He, well, he's sort of mysterious about things. I see. Will you find him for me, Mr. Templer? I'm afraid something may have happened to him. Something terrible. I'll do what I can. That means you'll find him. A very pretty vote of confidence, but... And uh... it's more than a vote. You're a lifesaver, Simon. Well, thank you. I just hope I'll strike the right flavor with your husband. Hey, Bud. I beg your pardon, officer. Where are you going? Oh, uh, I'm on my way to the Exbrook. Uh, that's it, isn't it, at the end of the pier? Yes, that's the Exbrook. But visiting hours ain't in effect. Oh? Yeah, Harbor Detail's got a little job of work to do. Oh, such as dredging. It sounds deep. Hmm. For anything in particular? A body. I see. Someone fell overboard. Well, maybe. Or he could have been pushed. Okay, Mr. Tepler. The lieutenant is ready to see you now. Yeah, it's very nice of the lieutenant. Come on. They uh, found the body, then. Yeah. Watch your step here. Hey, Lieutenant. Here's the guy. Okay, Simmons. Now, Mr. Templer, I understand you've been hanging around. Watchful waiting might be a better description. What brings you here? A man named Sparrow. Friend of yours? I never met him. However, I'd like to see him. Why? He might be worth seeing. He might be. Uh, wait a minute, Mr. Templer. Aren't you the saint? Yes, but you don't want my biography at the moment, do you? No. Come here. You said you wanted to look at Sparrow. Okay, look at him. Yeah. He's not very pretty. Nobody is after soaking in the harbor for three days. Fish must have been hungry. Yeah, the guy's face is practically gone. Mm -hmm. But he was carrying his papers on him. The temple you found your man, Frank Sparrow. Mm. He was uh, drowned. Surprise, he wasn't drowned. There were a couple of bullets in him. Oh, who put him there? The same night he disappeared, the night watchman on this tub disappeared, too, an old guy named Gleason. We found the watchman's gun in one of the ventilators. Two shots had been fired from it. Also, some weights were missing. The watchman shot Sparrow, put the weights in his clothing to keep him down for a while. Kept him down for three days, but Sparrow came up anyway. Proving you can't keep a good man down. Or a bad man. <laughs> Templar acts suspicious about anything, Susie? No, he believes me. He's out looking for Sparrow now. You're a good girl, Susie. I wonder, Rigo. Now, that could be unhealthy. You and Collins asked you to front for us. Get a legit character like Templar to find Sparrow for us, for which you get paid. Don't wonder. All right, Rigo. Except why are you so anxious to find Sparrow? He owes me and Collins and Bill. Must be a lot. Mind your own business, Susie. All right, all right. Where's Collins? Telling Templar. We want to know where Sparrow is the instant Templar tags him, see? Rigo, you told me why you didn't want to go to Templar yourself. You said he'd be more willing to do it if a pretty girl like me asked him. Well, what's that supposed to be? News? No, but I'm beginning to think. Maybe the reason you wanted your names kept out of it is... Suppose something happens to Sparrow after Templar finds him. Something fatal. Then you'd be in the clear. You've got a very healthy imagination. Uh, it doesn't feel healthy right now. Susie, I... listen. You're running an errand for me. Don't try to run it up to anything else. Otherwise... You wouldn't lay a hand on me. Oh, wouldn't I? <laughs> oh. oh. See? You were wrong about that. <sighs> you could be wrong about lots of things. So stop imagining. Just do like you're told. There we go. <laughs> Help me. I'll duck into the bedroom till we see you. Is it Collins or somebody else? All right, all right. Coming. Oh, 
Hello, Simon. May I come in? Of course. I, I'm i glad you came. I've been sort of lonely. And that's not exactly why I came. Oh? Simon, you don't mean you've already found Frank? I don't. Oh, Simon, you're wonderful. Not especially. It was very simple. What isn't simple is why someone followed me here. Someone followed you? Oh, you must be imagining it. Perhaps. I'd thought better of my imagination, though. However, Susan, what was your husband carrying on him? Oh, I don't quite know what that means. Carrying something? Just a wild thought. Susan, when I got down to the ship, the police were very busy. Doing what? Fishing a body out of the harbor. Oh. The papers found on it belonged to Frank Sparrow. Oh, no. No. Nothing else in his pockets except... Susan, a night watchman named Gleason disappeared the night of the murder, presumably after emptying those pockets. Oh, that's why you asked me what my husband might be carrying on. Yes. I don't know. I... Simon, you'd better go now. Of course. The uh, shock. Yes, that's right. Good night, Susan. Good night, Simon. Those shots came from down the hall. Simon, don't leave me. Stay there, Susan. Come on back inside. Who? Who was it? The new corpse. The same man who'd followed me here. Collins. What? Oh, nothing. I... You just said Collins. Did you see the man who shot him? No, by the time I got to the end of the hall, he was gone. Who was Collins, Susan? I don't know anyone named Collins. You must have made a mistake. Susan, a man was just killed out there. The police will be along in a very little while. They'll identify him. That'll lead them to you. No, the police don't know anything about... I do. You wouldn't tell them. How long have you been married to Frank Sparrow? Uh, a couple of years. Mm. You spend a lot of time outdoors, don't you? Someone must have told you how attractive tanned blondes are. Well, yes, I do get out a bit. Mind uh, slipping that wedding ring off your finger? No. Mm, thanks. What are you staring at? Your ring finger. Tanned prettily, even under the ring. What? You haven't been wearing that ring very long, Susan. Otherwise, there'd be a band of lighter skin on your finger. Which means you're not married, Susan. You just started wearing that ring today. Simon, I can't... You'll have to. You pretended to be Sparrow's wife and asked me to find him. Why? I... A friend of mine... I mean, Sparrow was a friend of mine. I was worried about him. No. You know I didn't kill Collins. I was here in the room with you when... Someone you know might have killed Collins, just as you might have killed Sparrow. But you said the night watchman Gleason... Was suspected, that's all. Who asked you to pretend you were Sparrow's wife? Uh, a man named Rigo. Why did he want Sparrow found? He didn't tell me. Any connection between Rigo and the dead Mr. Collins? I'll... How about Rigo and Sparrow? I never heard of Sparrow until today. What were you supposed to do when I found Sparrow for you? Tell Rigo, that's all. Huh? Where is Rigo now? I, I don't know. Where does he live? I don't know that either, but... The next time you see him, Susan, ask him to get in touch with me, hmm? Oh, all right, Simon. Is there a back way out of this apartment? I'd uh, just as soon avoid the police. A uh, back way? Apartments frequently have them, you know, usually through the kitchen. <laughs> of course. Come on, I'll show you. You can go right out here. Those stairs lead to the street. Oh, thank you, Susan. Simon, couldn't you forget that you ever came to see me? Forget? Yes. <laughs> Susan, I can be forgetful about a lot of things, but not murder. Oh. Bad boy gone? <gasps> oh, Rigo. You weren't very smart, Susan. What do you mean? Feeding bright boy my name. I had to. Otherwise, he might have turned me over to the cops. You didn't knock off Collins, did you? So why worry? Because maybe you did. Little thinker, ain't you? Susie, I was in the apartment when Collins got it. You could have gone out the back door, shot him, then come back. Sure. Only you forgot to mention that to Temper. I didn't forget. Rigo, you were expecting something from Sparrow. Something worth money. That night watchman who killed Sparrow must have stolen it. But you're going to find that night watchman now, aren't you? I wouldn't know. Sparrows being fished out of the harbor don't make me feel good. Rigo, I stuck my neck out on this for peanuts. There's been a couple of murders. Rigo, I want more money for my end of this job. Suppose I did kill Colin, Susie. That would be on account of I didn't want to cut him in. 
I mentioned your name to Templar. That would be because I wouldn't want you to get the same idea about me. You're not only pretty, Susie, you're smart. Thanks. You could easily get too smart. All right. I'll cut you in, Susie. But no more flapping of the mouth to Templar, right? Right. Goodbye, Susie. Where are you going? Home. I'm a hard-working man. I need a rest. What about Gleason? The night watchman? Don't worry. He'll have to peddle the stuff he took off, Sparrow. When he does... You won't forget to let me know, will you? I won't forget. And uh, you watch yourself for that saint, huh? Because the way I've heard it, it's only a nickname. Hello, Rico. Oh. I rather thought you'd be using the back door. Templar. Templar. Let's not loiter, shall we? The uh, police object. You have a nice visit with Susan? Susan who? <laughs> Rico. If you weren't in Susan's apartment, you might have been out in the hallway killing Collins. Uh, now you mention it, you meant Susan. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, I was in her apartment all the time. Why were you hiding when I dropped in? Well, you know how it is. I'm a gentleman. Yeah, yeah, the word has been redefined since I went to school. Rigo, it looks as though Sparrow is a dead end. How are you going to find Gleason? Why should I want him? Whatever Sparrow had, Gleason has it now. You know something? We ain't near Susie's apartment house anymore. It's kind of late. Nobody around. Oh, you're very observant. Also, somebody who don't like interference. Oh, so that's why you're showing me your gun. Temple, what's to stop me from getting you out of my hair? Hmm? For one thing, you're bald. For another, the man who's been trailing us ever since we left Susan's house. You're lying. Look back, fast. Oh, no, you're just angling for a chance to jump me. Hmm, that's your problem. Okay, move up in front of me a couple of feet, but now I'll take a look. You saw him? Yeah, I seen him. Only, I couldn't have. He, he's dead. <laughs> Rigo, you're a fool. If you hadn't started running, we could have caught the man trailing us. I like this better, being in a cab. Oh, that's the kind of remark I approve of. Louis, stay out of this conversation. Uh-huh. Suddenly you don't like cab drivers, Mr. Temple? Oh, I'm crazy about them. Look, I see two fellas having a foot race in the middle of the night. I think maybe they would get there faster in a cab. I pull over to the curb, and it's my fault it turned out to be you, huh, Mr. Temple? <laughs> no, Louis, and I'm very grateful that you stopped for it. Okay. Hey, nobody mentioned the address. 53 Carlton. Well, it's our address. Who is that man, Rigo? George Washington. You're a little behind the times. Rigo, did you kill Collins? No. Can you prove him? No. The police are going to want somebody for that murder. Well, let them find their own murderers. I got other troubles. It may turn out to be the same trouble, Rigo. If you didn't kill Collins, then the man who did may be after you. Yeah? Yeah, and for the same reason. To get you out of the way. So he could cash in on the stuff Sparrow was smuggling into the country. Jewels, I'd guess. Who cares what you guess? Besides, that would make it Gleason, and I ain't afraid of Gleason. Why not? Because he ain't dead. Hey, Mr. Templer. Yes, Louis? You know, personally, I'm not sorry we deposited Mr. Rigo at his house. He's not the type I'm comfortable driving around in my cab. Don't be narrow-minded, Louis. No, it's not that I'm narrow-minded. It just so happens I'm not bulletproof, neither. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Templer, you want I should uh, drive you back to that blonde's apartment? No, Louis. Oh, then your description of her was not the truth. Oh, it was the truth, but I have a more important errand. Well, in the middle of the night, what could be more important than a blonde? A corpse. Louis, make it the morgue, hmm? Hmm? about time. I don't enjoy waiting around for a fare outside of the morgue. I get morbid thoughts. Where do you want I should take you? Back with? to Rigo's house. To Rigo's house? Mm. Look, Mr. Temple, I got a suggestion. Why don't we just stay here and send for Rigo? You know, then after he got through with us, we could move right into the morgue without bothering nobody. <laughs> no, you're a pessimist. Yeah. I should ought to have been a truck driver. Oh, you whistle nicely? Yeah. My brother-in-law, he keeps telling me. Louis he says you should be a truck driver. You learn manners. You learn to be polite to people. Learn how to help distressed motorists when they're in distress. Learn how you shouldn't be a red hog. And above everything else, he says, you don't have to associate with riffraff. So do I listen to him? No. 
I stay a cab driver and I visit the morgue. Hey, Mr. Templer, what did you do there? Looked at the corpse they fished out of the harbor. Uh huh. He improved in appearance? Hardly. However, I did suggest to the officer in charge that he get in touch immediately with Sparrow's dentist. Oh, wow, wow. The corpse has a toothache, huh? Oh, I don't know, but it's possible, Louis. It's possible. <laughs> Let me in. Wait a minute till I unlock the door. Ah, it's nice of you to visit me, Susie. What's the matter with you, Regal? Nothing. I see things. You sure you come along? Of course I did. Maybe you only think so. Because maybe somebody came with you, only you can't see him. You're drunk. I wish I was drunker. Regal, you killed Collins. Is that so? You wouldn't have killed him on speculation. You must have found Gleason yourself. Got the jewels from him. Then you killed Colin so you could keep them all. Baby, you're nuts. I want my share. So you come right over and ask for him. Like if I knock Collins off on account of those stones. What makes you think I wouldn't do the same thing for you? Because I've got this. Oh. Ladies model? It'll do. You're not very bright, Susie. I can... Regal, what's the matter? Window. There's somebody at the window. Regal, he's got a gun. It's funny, I couldn't have figured him to have it's one. It's pointed at you. Regal, run! From him? Well, there's no place to run to. I can... Oh, Regal. No place to run. Oh, no, no. Open the door. Who go? Diamond. You're shot. Where's Rico? Never mind. Rico. Rico, who shot you? No. No, funny. Rico, don't be a fool. Rico. That's that. Diamond. He's dead. You were the only one in the room with him, Susan. He was shot through that window. Simon, please believe me. Mm. Window glass broken by the bullets. Pieces of glass fell into the room. That means... Someone outside shot Rico. Someone... Keep talking, Susan. He's still out there. <gasps> yeah, he mustn't know that we know. We're in the light. Who is it? Never saw him before. But I think I could name him. Keep talking, Susan. <sighs> I'm going to work my way around to the wall next to the window. Mm. As soon as I get there, put the lights out in here. The lights? Why? You're near the switch. Don't look at it. All right. It's to your left. A little higher than your waist. Turn a bit away from me. Slide one hand behind your back. What are you going to do, Simon? Go out the window as soon as the lights are out. I'm scared. Shh, shh, shh. Nothing to worry about. I'm set, Susan. Got your finger on the switch? Yes. All right, then. Let's have a little darkness. Hey, let's go. What do you mind? Think. No, I'm in trouble. You're not. You. You. Yeah, much better. Susan, put the lights on inside. All right, Simon. Simon, did you? Yes, yes. Our oh. little stranger is resting. You recognize him? No, I've never seen him. Then perhaps I'd better introduce you to him, Susan. Meet Mr. Sparrow. So, all right, Mr. Templer, the guy you nabbed outside of Rigo's house was Sparrow. Yeah? So he killed Rigo, so he also killed Collins. Only but he was dead. No, Louie. They checked with Sparrow's dentist. It wasn't Sparrow in the morgue. Oh, sure, sure. He was out shooting people. But if it wasn't Sparrow, who was it? The night watchman, Gleason. Oh, uh-huh. you mean instead of Gleason knocking off Sparrow, it was Sparrow which knocked off Gleason? That's right, uh-huh. Louis. Then he emptied Gleason's pockets and put his own papers in them. He hoped that would result in the police looking for Gleason. Yeah. He also hoped it would throw Collins and Rigo off. Well, it did. Until he could kill them and keep the jewels for himself. Yeah, that's a very low type. <laughs> Only you must have known before you caught Sparrow. On account of, you know, you told the cops to look up that dentist? 
So how did you know? Well, obviously, Sparrow was in a hurry after he killed Gleason. The shot might have been heard. Therefore, he didn't have time to change clothes with the dead man. All he could do was empty Gleason's pockets of everything that might have identified him and substitute his own identification. And then he hoped the water and the fishes would make it impossible to identify Gleason, huh? Uh-huh. But that still don't tell me. Louie, Louie, it you was what? too pat. What? The only thing in a corpse's pocket turned out to be his identification papers. A corpse otherwise unrecognizable? Oh, it's too pat. And therefore... And therefore a fake. Sure, okay. Yeah, but there's something else you have to explain. Which is why ain't that beautiful blonde with you? Susan? Yeah. Oh, she's in conference at headquarters. Is that so? Yes. Who says a policeman's lot is not a happy one? You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's cast, you heard Sheila Bromley as Susan and Ted DeCorthia as Rico. Sidney Miller played the night watchman Gleason. And Peter Leeds played Collins. Harry Bartell was the lieutenant and Harry Brown the policeman. Louis is played by Larry Dobkin. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of The Saint. Good night. written by Louis Vitti. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charters, is a James L. Sackley production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring with Errol Flynn and Michelin Pearl in Mar- uh, William Marshall's production of Bloodline. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. This is Don Stanley speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. All you listeners are invited to another gala broadcast later today of the big show, NBC's Sunday Listening Treat. The unpredictable Tallulah's famous guests for the big show today include everybody's favorite, Jimmy Durante, the clever Milton Berle, Ethel Merman, and Gordon McRae with songs you like to hear, and many, many more stars and entertainers. Your big Sunday lineup today also includes a splendid one-hour presentation of the comedy, The Man in Possession, bringing you as it stars the famous acting team of Rex Harrison and Lily Palmer on Theater Guild on the Air. And enjoy the Phil Harris Show later 